What's up everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to talk about something that might get some people's feathers ruffled. But I was moving some stuff around and saw this sitting in the corner under a pile of dust and I thought I'd get it out and I was trying to remember the last time I used this machine. This is the Titanium Flux 125 from Harbor Freight. I was trying to figure out the last time I used it and it honestly was when I did the video on welding stainless steel with a flux core machine. I had this loaded up with the stainless flux core wire. That's the last time I used it. And before that, um, it was probably back in the spring of last year. So almost a year ago, because I got the cinder in about June is when I did that video. And ever since then I've been using it. So I want to talk about this machine in 2023 and whether you should buy it or not and why. And this is where things are going to get a little controversial, I think, because there seems to be this big stigma around buying import welders from Amazon. And I'm not sure why that is and how that came to be. But when you strip this down, this is an import welder. It's just not sold through Amazon. It's sold through Harbor Freight. And I don't think that in 2023, if you're looking to buy a flux core only machine, that the Harbor Freight Titanium 125 is the way to go. Now there's a few reasons for that. There's a few reasons that I don't think this is a good machine for a beginner when it comes to value, as well as some points that it you can't really grow into this machine. It just kind of is what it is. And we'll get into that here in a second. I do want to start by saying that I don't think this is a bad welder. It welds good as long as you do your part, it will weld for you. There's no question about that. I used this for about a year before I started this channel and ended up getting some different machines available to me. I didn't have any problems with it. Actually, I take that back. I had one problem with this machine and it's actually the only machine I've had a problem with. So everyone knocks import machines for being cheap and low quality, but yet the Harbor Freight machine is the one I had one problem with and the relay in here got stuck for the wire feed. So it would continuously just feed wire without pulling the trigger on the torch. And a quick tap with a screwdriver on that relay freed it up and it's worked fine ever since. But that was after I'd already cut into the covering on the lead to try and see what was going on. So that was a little unfortunate, but the machines worked fine since. So let's talk about a couple of things that this welder doesn't have in terms of value. So regular price right now at Harbor Freight, this machine is $199.99. It's actually come down a little bit. It was higher than that for a while. You can find it on sale as low as like $169, $175, somewhere in that range. I still don't think it's necessarily worth it at that price. The reason I say that is because you can go on Amazon and you can find a less expensive machine that has more features and a little bit more flexibility. Some of the things that this machine lacks compared to some of the other import options out there are, this is a flux core only machine. There are no uh, connectors for stick welding or lift TIG. A lot of the welders on Amazon have that feature. You can stick weld with them. You can get a lift TIG set up and do that while still having this lead built in as a flux only MIG portion. The second thing is this is a 110 only machine. So you don't have the option to run this on 220. And that kind of limits you because the breaker that is in your garage or workshop, if it's 110, odds are you may only have a 30 amp breaker. You're probably not going to have a 40 amp breaker. So if you're trying to run this machine at maximum amperage, you probably won't be able to weld very long, if at all, without tripping your breaker. When you step up to 240, usually you get a bigger breaker, the machine's running at a lower amperage, and then you can weld within the duty cycle of the machine without any issues. And a lot of those machines are 110 or 220, and they automatically switch, so there's no extra steps or anything to be able to do that with those machines. So that's kind of where the value thing comes in. I mean, you can get into the Simder MIG-140, which you guys have all seen on this channel quite a bit, that machine runs about 150, 160 regular price, and then usually there's some kind of promo or coupon running to bring it down closer to 120. That machine is 140 amps, can stick weld or lift TIG if you want to, and is a 110, 220 machine. It's also smaller than this. It's about half the height, maybe a hair longer. So 
you know, it's a smaller package if you weld. Occasionally you need to store it away somewhere. It doesn't take up as much room. Now, as I said, this machine is a good machine as far as its welding capabilities and the quality of the welds it can produce. If you put decent wire in this and know what you're doing, you're gonna be able to weld with this machine without any sort of issue within its limitations. So don't think of this as a, this welder's bad, don't buy it. It's more of, this isn't the best value out there if you're looking for an import machine. So do some research and kind of figure out what you want in a machine. In my opinion, more options are always better, especially when you're a beginner. You can experience the flux core wire fed you can stick weld, and if you really wanted to, you could lift TIG on most of the import machines that have connectors on the front of them. This one just doesn't have that and doesn't offer it. Another great machine, if you don't care about the 220 to look into, is the Yes Welder uh, Flux 135. It's also quite a bit cheaper than this machine, and Yes Welder has quite a decent reputation. I have their TIG machine. I don't have the Flux 135, but I've seen great things about it. So check that out. I'll put links to that and the Simder in the description below, as well as a few other welding accessories in case you wanna check those out. I'll run a couple test welds here just on a piece of old plate that I've already welded on, just to show you that this machine is perfectly capable of doing great welds. And you can kind of decide for yourself. So as you can see, these welds are good. This is one I just did. I did this one here, this one down here as well as this one over here. I did get divots at the end of these because I didn't have things set up quite how they should be, but you can tell that the rest of the weld is good. So just an example, this thing will weld just fine as long as you have decent wire and have a little bit of an idea as to what you're doing. One case where I think this machine would be worth it is if you get Harbor Freight gift cards and stuff and think that you do want to get into welding, by all means, use the gift cards on this machine. You're not going to necessarily regret getting this machine. I just think that if you're not tied to Harbor Freight through like gift cards and that sort of thing, then there are better options for your money out there. 